Hello everyone, my name is Lisa and I'm the Viet Vegan because I'm Viet and I'm vegan and today we're doing a wedding vlog video and it's very long overdue. So the footage from this video is from April and it's the end of August now. But the reason why it's so late is because what I've learned from wedding planning so far is that the hardest part isn't even like planning the actual wedding. It's like all the people involved and like managing feelings and managing expectations and family and friends and bridal parties and grooms parties and like dealing with all that stuff takes a lot of emotional energy and honestly doesn't make for very good video all, like I did it's not stuff that I could have recorded because you know we are also private people but that's the reason why it's super 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 delayed but luckily even though I didn't put out these videos I still recorded a bunch of stuff so I still have like documentation of like the planning process so in today's video um, this is just from April what we ended up doing is we were preparing for the tea ceremony which I shared a photo of on the community tab on my channel so if you guys haven't seen that here it is this is like the first round of the try on type thing and then I'm practicing makeup and then I'm also uh, doing our taste test for our menu tasting so it's really exciting um, I hope you guys enjoy this video a huge shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring this video I'll get more into that in uh, towards the end of the video but uh, yeah it's really cool to be able to promote a service that I have been using for my wedding to you guys I don't know it's pretty cool yeah I hope you guys enjoy this video see you at the end <laughs> what up family what up, family? Yeah. We have like a Vietnamese wedding coming up in July, and so we yeah. bought a bunch of um, Ao Yai yeah, yeah. for like Eddie's sisters, um, my bridesmaids, and then we have our wedding ones, which are red. So these are ours, and Eddie has a matching one like this. And then we have matching hats. So this one is for Eddie, and then my matching hat is this one, but it's too small. It doesn't like stay on my head. Is this supposed to be up like this or down more? It's like up like this, right? Yeah, is it like that? Yeah. I'm gonna take a picture, so just give it to Koha so she know how small the boat. Hey, she's called me Big Head. Janelle's gonna come and try on hers. Hers is this purple one, this lilac one. So in theory, it looks real cute, but then, <laughs> Oh, Eddie! Oh. <laughs> Literally, I can't put my arms down. Eddie, cũng 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 là bị nhỏ. Marry her like that. <laughs> Just like that. Oh, Will you take the my arms hands? Are like shit for a hug. If it... <laughs> Love you. I can't do mine either. Cái cái này nó nhỏ lắm. Go try the other and see if the size is okay. The uh... okay. It's over there. <laughs> All right, so I just took a shower. Um, I'm going to be experimenting with some more wedding makeup today. I am considering doing my own makeup because uh, budget-wise, I can't afford $300 to do my makeup uh, in a trial for my wedding. So I'm gonna try doing my own. One of the struggles that I found with um, considering getting a makeup artist for my wedding is that um, I don't know if their kits are gonna be vegan friendly. Um, so a lot of makeup uses um, animal products like mineral oil or um, carmine or it's tested on animals. So I would like all the makeup that's used on me, especially for my wedding, to be vegan and cruelty free. But that's kind of hard to find in a makeup artist. And a lot of the vegan cruelty free makeup artists that I know, they don't use strictly just vegan and cruelty free makeup. So I'm gonna try and put on like a full face of like bridal makeup as like a test today. I'm also filming today, so I gotta just put my makeup on anyway. So that's what we're doing. And for the record, I'm not naked. I'm wearing a towel. Lately, I've been really bad at it, but I've been trying to drink more water so that I can get in the habit of making sure that I'm well hydrated before the wedding. All right, I am dressed. I have my foundation and bronzer and concealer done um, and some basic skincare. Initially, I was hoping to stick our budget to be around 10k total so 5k from me 5k from Eddie but the photographer took a pretty significant chunk um, which is fair because photography is pretty expensive but photography and video actually got a really good deal on it took a quarter of our budget I also had to buy rights to post the video on my YouTube channel so that cost me a little chunk as well that's basically the budget that I would have had for makeup but whatever um, and then the venue took up 
not that much, but it's about 2000 as well. And then I have to get like extra permits and stuff for um, a liquor license and stuff like that, a special occasion permit or whatever. The food in itself um, yes. cost me the majority of our budget. It's kind of like blowing us over. So we're like, we're at 10K now for our budget. Actually, we're a little bit over 10K. Um, and that's without decorations, dress, um, rentals, alcohol, efficient. There's like so many different things I need to like look into. Um, we booked the photographer, we booked the venue, and we sort of worked out the food and the cake slash dessert. So we're gonna do some donuts from Beachwood Donuts, I think. We're gonna order a bunch and then we're gonna arrange someone to pick it up from Beachwood Donut. And then we're gonna do a top tier dessert, I think, um, like a top tier of cake. Eddie and I have been sort of like not passively planning, but just we're just trying to take it like really slowly so that I don't freak out. I just need to like practice and get better at putting on makeup. And then I should be okay for my own wedding. Some people have told me that I'm gonna be too stressed at my wedding to do my, my own makeup, but I actually find doing my, my makeup pretty therapeutic and fun. All right, so this is um, one of the looks I'm sort of experimenting with, with uh, for bridal. Um, I kind of messed up this eye a little bit, but this eye looks significantly better. So far, I think this is okay. I need to like learn how to put on false eyelashes. These are my natural eyelashes on this eye. They look a lot better because there's the double eyelid. But on this mono eyelid, the eyelashes just kind of like are mostly underneath my eyelid, which is kind of annoying because like they're in there. They exist, but they're just hiding. Today is Saturday, April the 28th, and we are headed to the place, the caterer, the, the caterer. Uh, to do our tasting. So we've selected our menu. I can't remember off the top of my head what we ended up choosing, but here's a selection preliminarily so far. Uh, so we have a tasting of six of the eight items. No, I don't know. Six of the, I think, nine items. We have a couple that like I know are gonna taste good, so I, I didn't taste those. And then we're tasting some of the ones that I'm like a little hesitant on today. The thing is, we just came from a meetup with some other vegans. And, and um, you know what vegans do, they eat. <laughs> yes, we do. So we just had sushi at Tenen. We just found out that the vegan fish there, the salmon, has casein in it. Or no, it has whey in it, yeah, which, which sucks because they told us repeatedly that it was vegan. And then I looked at the package, which was not vegan. So that sucks. I'm gonna have to remove that video or like put a disclaimer. No, I'm probably gonna just remove that video. We're gonna go for a little tasty test. I'm gonna try and show you as much as we can. Um, I've been told that the lighting is not that great, but Maria is also gonna be tasting along with us. So that's gonna be cool. Our, our whole thing is trying to stay away from that sort of over-processed stuff mm -hmm. um, and trying to find sort of like familiar flavors and textures that meat eaters are going to recognize that, that are obviously within what vegans are. That's perfect. Yeah. That's exactly what I want. Yeah. Yeah. I love so, it. So, I mean, the majority of your guests aren't vegan mm -hmm. and most people don't even notice. At the end of the night, they're like, oh, we didn't have meat. You know, it's like, yeah, because if it's good food, no one's gonna care. But I'm really happy that like, you were open to incorporating Satan, because like, a lot of people don't know what Satan is. They're like, what is this, blah, blah, blah. It's like, well, this is like, vegan meat, <laughs> in a sense, but it's, it's yeah. like, it's good in, it, on its, in its own right. Yeah, I right? think that the problem with mock meats is that often times you end up, you buy them and they're already made. Yeah. So we're making our Satan steak from scratch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it also means that you get a lot more say from flavor and texture and like, consistency things like that because literally we're making it from scratch. Yes. The whole point of the tasting is not for it to be like perfect. It's just to kind of get a sense of what our style is like mm -hmm. and for us to sort of talk about your palate and sort of what you're hoping for. That's perfect. 
So far, in my experience, the caterer is the one who knows all the ins and outs for wedding planning. They're the expert when it comes to knowing about scheduling, seating, serving, rentals, and all that jazz. We ended up planning the venue around our caterer because Toronto venues are really expensive and most charge like a huge landmark fee for using an outside caterer. So if you actually want delicious vegan food that isn't just like grilled mushrooms or something, you're probably gonna have to find a caterer that specializes in vegan food. Plus with so much of a wedding revolving around food, having a caterer you believe in and trust is a must. It's a humble, good yeah. It's a humble little yeah. order. It kind of reminds me of like a, like a ranch. A little bit. So the orders that we picked out were the ones that I was like a little concerned about because I wasn't sure how they would taste together. Mm -hmm. And I've also made heirloom potatoes a couple times and they've like, they're not always consistently like soft all the way through. So I was like, I hope that they're, I mean, I, you obviously know what you're doing, but mm -hmm. I'm down with that. Yeah, yeah that's a good time. I always find it interesting <laughs> Who's talked to people about like, what's your tasting menu strategy? Is it like the winning combination? Or is it all the stuff where you're like, WTF, I don't know what that is, but uh, yeah, curiosity killed the cat, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah. So this is like a, like a zucchini and parts of palm cake. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> um, I added up a couple of things because I didn't think it was like a complete oven. Uh, so uh, there is uh, gherkins in the aioli, the lemon aioli. Nice. Kind of get, give it almost a tartar sauce. And then on top is fried um, capers. Is this another hand thing? Oh yeah, this yeah. is a password. Okay. You know what? This is a soft, creamy, a little bit of crunchy, crunch. salty. Kind of salty. Oh hell yeah. Uh, chickpea sliders. Uh, smoking in house with hickory. A little bit of toasted uh, cumin there as well, mm -hmm. made with a habanero cranberry chutney, and the bun is just basically like a house-made bun with toasted sesame on top. Okay, so this was like my concern with the chickpea slider, because mm -hmm. I had a feeling it would fall apart, especially with a bun this hard. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how to address that. Though. It's not usually... I don't think because the bun is a bit small. Like it's not even so much the size of the bun, it's like you don't go through it because right that was in force. Like Which the chickpea, the patty will squish before the bun. Yeah, it's so chickpea, the chickpea is really soft. Yeah. Like the texture of the chickpea is fine, it's just people are going to initially take a bite and then they're going to be like, oh, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, other than that, it tastes great. I like, it, but... I like the, I do see what you mean about the texture because I see like, I feel like the hardness is supposed to balance the texture of the chickpea. Um, yeah, otherwise it's like baby food. I see what you're saying. It was a little difficult. <laughs> Maybe arugula and slice strawberry salad. Creamy lemon balm poppy seed dressing. There's toasted potatoes uh, on top, which is a pumpkin seed. Uh, tossed in a little bit of brown sugar, fruit maple, and some fruit. Uh, there's like the flowers on top with a little bit of uh, uh, sliced shallots. I was like a little worried. I was like, should we get a salad? Like, I feel like that one is a little too basic and like too vegan. I was a little worried about it. This is really. I don't know if I should tell you that I'm being worried about something. I have no filter, so. It's not about me, it's about you. It's about what you want. Yeah, and the thing. <laughs> I don't want her to. That's, what, that's the thing, though. I don't want her to judge no, me. No, you're joking. <laughs> I've been doing this long enough. The thing is, everyone's different. Everyone has their own standard. One person's. You know, this is too small, and the person this is too big. This is too salty, this is too... And that, that's the whole reason why I take notes. No, I really like that you uh, are really conscious about like the ingredients and where your ingredients are coming from. Mm -hmm. And also, we're, um, we're three spam certified. Basically means that we... Our mandate is that at least 35% of our spam on food has to go towards Ontario um, grown and produced product. Uh, Saint uh, call it like a tenderloin, I guess. It's like a tenderloin style. It's sliced. Steamed, sliced, and then seared. On top is a mushroom uh, jus. On the bottom is a uh, creamy uh, potato mash. It's a little too salty for me. Okay. But I also tend to over undersalt things for myself. I think it'd just be like dialed on just a touch. Sure. The mash is beautiful. I do find it has a very juicy texture right now, and I think that the contrast of the juicy texture with like the steered outside is perfect. But I do agree that there, people are not going to have the the knife to cut it, right? 
so good though. That mash is amazing. That is really good. Okay. That's precisely what I wanted. Just dial back to salt a bit. Yes. It is 11 o'clock. We just got home and we had a very long but very productive uh, talk with Marie from Urban Acorn. I feel uh, very confident in what she can accomplish. Like the food we taste tonight was bomb. There are some uh, changes that we need to make to our menu. There are some things that like I know that I was gonna like I'm gonna like but not everyone of our guests is like super adventurous. We decided to go with gnocchi instead of the uh, sausage roll, which I'm re actually really glad that we tried because if we had gotten that on the day of our wedding, I probably would have been a little upset. <laughs> so they're gonna make a little bit of changes to the way that the patty is made and the way that bread is made and some of the accoutrements to like continue having like the balance of like crunchy versus squishy, but also maintaining the structure of the chickpea. Slider, which sounds so weird and like not important, but I, the eating experience is important to me. So they're just like a funny team together and uh, they are really open to our ideas and our uh, sort of reception of the food. It was a good time. And like, I'm really glad with the strategy that we went for was like to try the things that we were hesitant about because a lot of the things were sort of confirmed and I'm actually really glad that we got to switch out the sausage roll with a gnocchi because the gnocchi sounds bomb as heck. It's going to be a good time. I'm really excited for the food. And we might do another tasting again, but it would be $100 that doesn't go towards our wedding. But I feel like that's almost worth it and it's like kind of like a date night with our caterer. <laughs> it's not a bad idea. I think, I'm, I think I'd be into it. So um, she also gave us a ton of ideas in terms of like rentals and like how we want to sort of design our night because of the venue. It ha has a bunch of these like little rooms, um, but there's like different pockets of space. There's an area outside. So to use all that space, I think that it's a good way to like, you know, have some games, have some like lawn games, have some karaoke, just have like different sort of rooms. Um, so the activities are gonna actually cost some money as well So that's like something that I want to do and I just want to make sure that like we have a party that is like fun and that people have things to do our budget is a little crazy, but we'll We're making it work. We're getting there. I don't know and then we also have to like plant a stag and dough I guess to raise money DJ and photo booth is it's Okay, that's not bad. I was expecting them to be $500 each. And yeah, that's like where we're at so far for wedding planning. I have an idea of the dress that I want, but I have to find a Vietnamese dress and a Western dress for the wedding. Cause I have a Vietnamese wedding, by the way, I'm telling you guys now, I have a Vietnamese wedding in July, the day after Margot's wedding, which is, which I'm a bridesmaid in for, but, but there's not like a ton I have to do, but it's just like, there's just a lot of stuff happening all at once. So that's that's where we're at. So yeah, all in all, food I'm really excited about. I just wanted to say a huge shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. I actually ended up using Squarespace before I like started the sponsorship. I did it to sort of show people my engagement photos because I didn't want to put them all on Facebook. So I posted some photos on Squarespace and I used it to organize the tea ceremony. It's just like really great and easy and I found that Squarespace made it easier for me to like pick and choose what I wanted. I could customize it exactly how I wanted it and I didn't have to worry about making it like mobile friendly or any of that kind of stuff. And there's a lot of those tools built in for like filling out a form or RSVPs and that kind of stuff. And I just liked how simple but also totally customizable it is. Yeah, I've really enjoyed using Squarespace for my wedding website. So if you guys wanna use that for yourselves, I have a code here for you if you want to check it out. Um, and I'll also leave a link down in the description for you to check out. So yeah, shout out to Squarespace. You guys are pretty awesome. Thank you guys for sponsoring this video and thank you guys for watching this video. So if you like this type of video, please look forward to more wedding vlogs in the next like couple months. Like I said, I have a lot of footage to catch up on. If you like this video, give it a like, comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on like the food and like what kind of, like how you approached um, your tasting menu or how you would approach it if you wanted to. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you guys have a delicious day. Bye.